Hey there! Welcome back to Legally Bound, the channel where law and business collide. Today, we're diving into a topic that affects many of you out there in the workforce. Restrictive covenants, specifically non-competes. So buckle up and let's get Legally Bound. First issue, is my non-compete enforceable? Now this is a hot topic with a lot of you and for good reason. The enforceability of non-competes can vary wildly because guess what? The laws are not uniform across the states. However, in Virginia, the test for enforceability is whether the restriction is an unreasonable restraint on trade. What does that mean in plain English? Simply put, a non-compete can't lock you out of your career without a darn good reason. So, how do we figure out if a company's reason is good enough? It's not just a coin toss, folks. There are a bunch of interconnected factors, but here's the key. The restriction must be reasonable, not against public policy, and not so broad that you're barred from your trade entirely. And it must serve a legitimate business purpose. There's more. In Virginia, for example, there is a blanket ban on non-competes for low-wage employees, and yes, that includes you 1099 independent contractors, not just the W-2 crowd. Also a little pro tip. A non-solicitation agreement, technically separate, relevant though, can't stop customers from coming to you on their own initiative as long as you don't initiate the contact. What do all these things mean for you? Well, you'll have to tune in next time to find out. So, what is reasonableness when it comes to my non-compete and non-solicit? Remember, we touched on the fact that the scope of the restriction has to be reasonable. But how do we measure that? We look at three main factors, time limitation, geographic limitation, and the scope of the worker business that's being restricted. Time limitation, what does that mean? The longer the non-compete, the more eyebrows it raises. Generally, anything over 18 months is probably pushing it. What about geographic limitation? If you have to move to another state to find work, that might not fly. How about the scope? The more specific, the better. If it's so broad that you can't work in any capacity in your field, that's a red flag. By way of example, being a janitor. But remember folks, these factors aren't looked at in isolation. It's all about the big picture, fairness. For instance, a worldwide restriction for three years on a single contract might make sense, unless that contract involves every player in your industry. Add another example, a one year restriction within a five mile radius of a restaurant's main office might be reasonable or it might not. It really depends on the context, rural Shenandoah versus bustling Washington DC. All right, so that's a quick summary of some of the basics of non-competes and a good follow-up, I think, from our last video. Thanks for tuning in to Legally Bound. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more legal insights. Until next time, keep your contracts tight and your rights in sight.